Right, this is our, our little add-end, our little piece about our extra piece in section five. Um, this isn't part of the notes I gave you because I just want you to watch for a minute. We're looking at, at solving, uh, th these are equal signs, equations. I wanted to remind you of something we've done in the past. So in the past, if we were solving this equation, we would simplify first, or I would simplify first anyways. 10 plus 1 is 11, so we'd have 11 minus 5x equals, I'd simplify here, and I would say that that equals 11 minus 5x. And already you should be going, oh, yeah, I remember this. Uh, if we get our x's all together, if I add 5x to both sides, I get that 11 equals 11, which is always true. We called that an identity. That says identity, believe it or not, because it's always true. Similarly, when we had a problem like this, and we simplified to 12x's plus another x is 13x, and 5x's plus 8x's is also 13x. If I got all my x's together, I'd subtract 13x from both sides. I'd end up with negative 3 equals negative 4, which is obviously not true. That negative 3 does not equal negative 4. We call that a contradiction. There we go. Contradiction. And that's something we covered before. Uh, so identity, always true. Contradiction, never true. We're going to use those ideas. We're going to extend it into inequalities now. So you're solving inequalities that contain variables on both sides. We're we'll looking at these kind of odd situations. So we have the identity and the contradiction. Again, identity when it's always true. Uh, if you look at this one here, 1 is always less than 7. But if you look at this one here, a contradiction, 7 is never less than 0. Be careful. When we have the equal signs, if they were the same number, true. Always true, because it equaled each other. If they were different numbers, always contradiction. That's not the case with inequalities. If this said negative 3 greater than negative 4, that would be true. Even though they're different numbers, that would be true. And if this said 11 is less than 11, that would be false. So just because the numbers are different doesn't necessarily give you a contradiction anymore. Just because the numbers are the same does not guarantee that it will be an identity anymore. So we're going to look at what happens. Let me do two on the board, or two with you, and then I'll have to try two on your own. So I'm solving the inequality. Same idea. I'm going to get my x's all by itself. I get that negative 7 is less than or equal to 5. Yep, negative 7 is less than 5. Identity. Okay. If I look at the next one then, same idea. I'm going to get y by itself, or try to anyways. Uh, but first I've got to get rid of some of these parentheses and simplify. So I'm going to distribute through the parentheses. I end up with 6y minus 4 minus 4 greater than or equal to 6y plus 21. I'm going to combine the things that I can. So I've got minus 4 minus 4, that's 6y minus 8 is greater than or equal to 6y plus 21. And you can already kind of see what's going to happen. If I get my y's all together, or eliminate them from both sides, in this case, negative 8 is greater than or equal to 21. That is not true. So that is a contradiction. Contradiction. So we're solving it just like we solved the other problems in section two, just like we saw, or sorry, section five, just like we solved in chapter two with an equal sign. Now we're just looking at when they're always true identity or when they're never true contradiction. Try these two on your own. I'm assuming you did it. I'm assuming you tried it on your own. I will mention you can't graph these because there's no variable to graph. Uh, and so if we're, if we're solving this one, you should have ended up with that negative 4 is greater than or equal to 2. Now, that's not necessarily the only answer you could have gotten. However, you should end up with a contradiction from this one. 
if you ended up with something like zero is greater than or equal to six, um, that's also a contradiction because negative four is not greater than two and zero is not greater than six. Same idea here. Uh, you should have ended up with that negative two is less than one. Not the only solution you could have had zero is less than three. Either way, this is an identity because negative two is definitely less than one. If you didn't get those two results or the contradiction identity, at least make sure you watch the linked video. Last one here, I'm going to have you try on your own. Uh, Rick bought a photo printer for supply, and uh, the supplies for the photo printer and the supplies were $186.90. So he went to Walmart, Target, Best Buy, wherever, bought a printer and supplies. And this will allow him to print photos for 29 cents each. So he can print the photos for 29 cents each after he paid the $186.90. A photo store will charge him 55 cents to print each photo, but he doesn't have to buy the equipment. How many photos would Rick have to print before his total cost is less than getting prints made at the photo store? Try and set up this problem. Hopefully at this point, setting it up is the hardest part. I'm assuming that you tried it. I'm assuming you paused it. Try the setup, really. Setting up the problem, figuring out how to answer the problem should be the hardest part, but it takes practice. It takes practice to try these problems. So pause it, try it on your own. The correct way to set this up would be that you have $186.90 for a flat cost plus 29 cents for each photo. I'm going to use P for photo. And then the photo store is 55 cents per photo, but no original cost. And we want to know when his co total cost will be less than the photo store. So like this. Now, if you haven't already, pause it and solve it on your own. I'm assuming you pause. I'm assuming you try it on your own. So you're going to subtract from both sides. You'll end up with like 718.8. Four, six, uh, da, 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 is less than P. But really, in terms of the problem, that doesn't make sense. You can't have 718.846 photos. It just doesn't work. So you could either say that he would have to make more than 718 photos, because if he made really 719 photos, would be more than 718 photos, that would work because you, can, you can't make a partial photo. At least we're going to pretend you can't make a partial photo. Or you could have said uh, that 719 or more. So P could equal 719 or be greater than 719 photos. Or the photos would have to be greater than 718. Either of those answers would be correct in context of the problem.